What's going on guys? What's going on girls? Sal here back again pounding out these videos today on a Monday. The first look lineups already out there. This Chiefs Rams games already out there and now we're gonna break down Thanksgiving. What is this outfit I have on? Well to be truthfully honest if you've been watching my videos this isn't the same getup that I've been in. I mean the outfit and room that I've been in. Um, I'm, at, I'm at home like right I'm at home for the holidays. I'm away from college right now back home from Penn State. I'm gonna be going to my grandparents on the holidays so I won't be able to shoot on Thanksgiving. Nobody should be doing that anyways. Enjoy the family time, the football, more importantly, and the food. Uh, but yeah, the three F's right there. But a lot of my clothes are in the hamper over there. I haven't washed much. I got some things that I could throw on. But I saw these two things hanging in the closet, and I was like, let's throw out the uh, the Clay Matthews jersey, my first ever real jersey. And then uh, let's throw on this little suit and see how it looks. It don't look too bad, so that's what we're going to roll with, right? We're going to break down this Thanksgiving slate. I haven't been more excited for like a week, starting like basically yesterday like I get excited every Sunday and then you get tonight's Monday night football game which is like going to be the game of the year possibly game of like the decade whatever it might be if it hits this point total and then you get Thursday's three games and we got three like good games actually I mean the Redskins take a little bit of a blow depending on who they're going to be starting at quarterback that night game's going to be incredible we're going to look at all three of them in this slate uh, and then you get um obviously you get the Sunday night again or you get the Sunday football again so it's just a great week of football Thanksgiving obviously you're going to eat a ton of food uh, obviously going to ruin any diets that any of you guys are starting this Monday. Uh, it's just going to be incredible. So we get so much action too. I remember last year I wasn't nearly as like into DFS as I am now, just kind of throwing $3 into a tournament last year. I played like Theo Riddick, he scores like two touchdowns, I think. And I thought I was going to win all the money, right? I ended up making probably like my money back because like obviously in tournaments you got to hit on everything. Uh, but I'm excited now that I actually like am into it more. I can actually make a video about this Thanksgiving game um, or the games. And this is it. So we got, this is the big one, right? The Wishbone Classic. It's a $20 entry buy-in, uh, 200K to first. So it's a little bit more of a buy-in, but you get three games on it. They also have the $333 buy-in. I think we can look at, let's look at these. Yes, I'm doing this on my sister's laptop. I literally got everything going. I got two videos uploaded on my laptop over there. That usually takes like two to three hours because it's just not the proper laptop. It's a MacBook Air. You need something better. So I've been trying to save up so I can get literally four videos out to you in like an hour instead of four videos out to you in like, six hours or more um so yeah let's go to thursday so thursday we got the yeah we got the wishbone we just said twenty dollars we got 333 dollars um 150k to first that's pretty enticing uh, if you had the money to put that you have a little bit cheaper of one um you have three dollar buy-in and that's gonna be 50k to first that's actually a pretty good tournament uh, let's see what the the payouts are yeah you get a decent amount of payouts on that one um yeah so that's actually pretty good i think there's a thursday there's a thursday night game slate as well uh, that's just the Chiefs. That's going to be like, again, another big showdown slate. So we have Atlanta and New Orleans. Yeah, right here. Uh, so yeah, that's 250k to first $10 buy. And that's a Thursday night game. That's going to be one of the best games of the year as well. Uh, or not of the year, but it has the potential to be one of like the highest scoring games of the year. Last time they met, I think that one went into overtime is a pretty good game. So let's just break this down, right? This one, I'm going to just be going through the Thursday games, the three games on Thursday. Uh, and then in the next video, I'm going to make another one. And I'm going to go through the Thursday night game since it's out so early on Monday. We're going to get those all out there. Four videos on Monday, bright and early. Start this week off right. And then later in the week, we'll just sit back, relax. Uh, maybe I'll wear this exact outfit to Thanksgiving. Maybe put the Rodgers under it instead of uh, Matthews. Or maybe my Aaron Jones jersey will come uh, in time. But yeah. Let's break down this slate. I'm excited if you can't tell. I love Thanksgiving. I love football. I love family. I love food. I love sitting there literally from, I go to Brooklyn and New York. I won't take up too much of your time with stories. Go there, get up at like eight, watch the parade, go to the parade, come back, watch football, eat at like two. Incredible. And we actually have a really good night game this time. So yeah, this is it. So obviously cash games are in play this week. Uh, I'm going to just look at, break down the slate. Really, again, a first look lineup at this type of stuff. Uh, later in the week, hopefully by Wednesday, I'm going to put out an all like all enticing lineup again like I usually do. Or not lineup, but breakdown video of like quarterback, wide receiver, tight end. Position by position breakdown on things that I find interesting. Any stats that I thought were intriguing. Uh, sneaky type plays. Um, some of the strategies that I'm looking at for the slate. And that I'll break down also in that video of the Thanksgiving Day game. This is really just a first look and me just kind of maybe going through a lineup construction. More so probably going to play tournaments, but probably will have some cash game lineups this week. So Drew Brees, monster at home. He's in the dome again. It's kind of tough to ignore him when he goes for 33 points. Like his home and away splits. I mentioned this like in the last time that I talked about Drew Brees. Yeah, they're going to be different. Like that's his career thing. Away, he's still getting 21 points. You can't ignore him getting 30 points a game at home. And now he's going up against Atlanta. That is like the nosebleed of a defense that any single team that plays them. And let me read, let me get my phone up here. 
Adam Leventan, great, um, great fantasy analyst. He's a great writer, plays majority cash games, calls like tournaments, lottery systems, which I mean, he's not right. You could have some skills in the tournaments. Obviously, you're going to be more better than casual players, uh, but he's just like very respected guy that I always look for his content. Love the Daily Fantasy Edge podcast. Love his articles. This is his tweet, ready? He's been tracking like the Atlanta backs and everybody knows that Atlanta's bad against pass catching backs, but just backs in general. JHI week one, 20.2 points. Uh, McCaffrey, 30.9. Alvin Kamara, week three, which Kamara again, 37. Mark Ingram's there, so that could be a little bit interesting. Uh, Gio Bernard, 25.6 with um, Joe Mixon out that week. James Conner, 37.5. Peyton Barber, Peyton Barber, 20.5. Saquon, 26.4. All over 20 so far. Then a bye. Then you have Adrian Peterson, the old man who's only going to do good if he gets in the end zone on the ground and has 100 yards. Uh, 6.3. And then Nick Chubb, 38.9. This past week, Ezekiel Elliott, 36.1. They're just literally giving points away to running backs. So to me, that puts Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara like in a viable spot to play but honestly this whole saints offense is viable and so is the falcons offense for that matter like this game when i do that one game showdown slate i should have done that first because this game is like gonna be incredible for the amount of points that you could put up honestly i'm fine with like this is a great strategy now i'm thinking about it you fade this first game we have detroit and chicago who like yeah there's gonna be some value plays there i don't, I don't know anthony miller's price yet he's been good taylor gabriel caught a bunch of balls anthony miller's cheap at four thousand dollars uh taylor gabriel is cheap at 3700 right? They're giving you cheap value plays right there. Maybe you say this could be the week, or, or you can even go Trubisky. Um, he's not that expensive either, right? Uh, I'll blow 6K at least. But I say fade this game. Dallas, yeah, you got Zeke out there, right? Zeke's probably the most expensive back. Yeah, so Zeke's out there. He kind of got shut down by Washington last time. This is just me going out on a tangent now that it's my first look lineup, or first look at this. Kind of got shut down, right? Their rush defense isn't terrible, Washington. Their secondary... It's pretty bad. Like, I think it's bad. I mean, they've been giving up yards at a chunk. Uh, ha ha Dick, shout out you. I think you're the reason. No, I'm not going to say that only. But he's he's worse than people think um, as a Packers fan. But, yeah, Zeke got shut down. If you fade Zeke, say you fade these two games on Thanksgiving Day when the amount of people playing cash game lineups and the tournaments is going to be exceptionally high for like casual players, right? Everybody's going to be like, oh, just throw a DraftKings lineup. You're going to be with your cousin. You never play DraftKings. He's going to be like, oh, throw a DraftKings lineup. Everyone's gonna be throwing them in. They're gonna wanna, they're not gonna wanna wait till 8.20 at night. Everyone's gonna be like, yeah, I wanna get all this. The sharp people are gonna say, I'm gonna fade this game with a low total. I'm gonna fade this game with a low total and probably Colt McCoy uh, going up against Dallas at home. Like, I don't want anything in that. Maybe I want Zeke, Amari maybe, but like Amari dropped an egg this past week. Like, and now he gets Josh Norman, who Josh Norman hasn't been nowhere near as good. Like, I mean, Mike Evans burned him this past week. But like, there's plays in these games, obviously. Like, you don't have to fade them, but I'm looking at this like this is the game that I want. Like I want to play the showdown slate, of course, but I also just want to play this game because like, look at these names. Literally everybody on the screen right now, outside of obviously Bridgewater because he's a backup quarterback, is like in play for me over basically everybody in these games outside of like maybe a Kenny Galladay, a Zeke, maybe a carry on and maybe a Trubisky. You're gonna get value at these positions, but. The main thing I'm saying is majority of people are going to say, I can't wait till 820. I want to see my guys play right now at 1230. And like, I'll probably want to do that too. But like some lineups, I don't want to wait till like, some people might say, I'll skip that game, but I don't want to wait till 820. I got to get my action in on these early games. You can win so many cash games just by fading these two early games because the entire public is going to say, I want to watch football and I want to watch my guys win me a bunch of money. They're not going to win a bunch of money if they just play these two games and they skip this one. This is where the money is to be made, right? Um... But let's just look at this, right? I don't know how you go away from, and there's a ton of great quarterbacks on this slate. Like Trubisky is a 30 plus point guy any single week out there. This could be that exact week on the road in Detroit on Thanksgiving though. I don't know. Uh, didn't look that great last night at all. Still had a decent game because he got to see some points on the ground. That's what he's going to do. But I don't know how Matt Ryan, who's had an incredible year, I really don't know how you go away from him, especially since he's coming off a down week, probably a lot more low ownership. Drew Brees is going to be the most owned guy on this slate, again, because casual players know how good Drew Brees has been doing. Uh, and sharp players, again, he's still a sharp play. At 6,700, though, he's a little expensive, uh, but he's probably a shoe in to get you 20 over, at least 20 points as a floor at home. Uh, but this could be a smart way to maybe fade him. These three quarterbacks right here, it's probably going to be McCoy in a short week. Uh, a note about McCoy, when he came in, he targeted this man right here, Josh Doxson, five times, who Josh Doxson ends up with seven targets. He looked like he was moving the ball. He can move around in that uh, pocket a little bit better than Alex Smith. 
Honestly, Alex Smith's injury was disgusting. Uh, I feel bad for him breaking two of like the worst injuries to come back from. My friend broke his fibia snowboarding and like he didn't leave his bedroom upstairs for a month. His family had to bring food to him. He said he walked downstairs for the first time, like very weak, of course, and like he forgot what his kitchen looked like. That like that is a dark time to go through. You kind of go crazy. So like thoughts with Alex Smith, of course. But Colt McCoy can move around a little better than Alex Smith, at least so he could avoid some of that terrible uh, pass rush that's going to come after him. Uh, from Dallas, you're going to have Lawrence out there. Obviously, this is going to be games that you're going to watch them because it's on football. People are going to bet on them. But again, I want to stay away from them. But Doxon is the guy who got five targets with McCoy out there. Who knows if that's just a small sample size, but he did. Jordan Reed got, I think, three looks as well. So that's kind of where he was going, at least um, when he was thrown into the game. But... Michael Thomas, another thing to mention, he became thir three years in a row. He got a thousand yards receiving, the fifth receiver ever to do that. He's great, of course. Let's say you go Mike or uh, Matt Ryan here, and like I said, I'm gonna try and fade these games literally completely and game stack this game. Maybe go back and get a value wide receiver from Detroit. One thing I will point out in Detroit, Bruce Ellington had nine targets this week. Nine targets, the second most. He ran out of the slot. I think he he outsnapped. Theo Riddick was the big name, right? He was 4K. He was cheap. He got a ton of targets or, or a decent amount of work in the passing game. They said they were going to put him in the slot. They signed Bruce Ellington. He gets nine targets. He runs 21 of his um, routes out of the slot. Theo Riddick only had three. So it seems like Ellington's going to be the guy out there on a short week. I don't think um, Powell was scratched, I think. Was he a healthy scratch? Uh, expected address. Yeah, I think he might have been a healthy scratch. So it seems like Ellington, especially after he gets nine targets, that's a spot that Matthew Stafford is always thrown to with Golden Tate out there. I think Elton's gonna, Ellington's gonna do well. Uh, we kind of projected Kenny Galladay to have at least eight targets. He got more so what the, the ceiling was with 14. He caught that late touchdown and ended up having a great game. So there is, like, there is good plays in these games, right? You can go to Chicago, you can look at their whole team. Mitch, I said it like. Uh, Allen Robinson, I like because they move him around. They don't just keep him on the outside against Slay, although I think Slay can be beat. He gets constant targets. Obviously, Tariq Cohen is a game breaker, right? There's guys in these games that you can stack like this, just this game, and that could be a potential. Obviously, if you stack one individual game, the amount of people that want to see every single game with their players in it, you're going to be differentiated. But if you wait till that night game, like I said, and I keep reinforcing it, that's where the most fantasy goodness is, one, most potential for points. And two, that's just where nobody's going to want to wait for that. They're all going to play the showdown slate. Well, you'll have the showdown slate and you'll have your guys in your actual lineup going off. Uh, but let's just see what we could fit. So if you go Matt Ryan here, I really don't think there's any way you can go away from Julio. Look at this production, three touchdowns in a row. Finally hit the regression monster, positive regression. Now he might come down a little bit. Uh, but the man just seen insane targets here, right? He's probably averaging about 10 targets this year. His points are up now that he's um, actually getting in the end zone. Again, Michael Thomas is great. Um, there's a lot of good wide receivers on this slate, guys, you can play. Calvin Ridley eventually is going to get back into the end zone and get back into his, like, receiving ways. I, I feel like Sanu is actually out snapping him out there. A lot of good wide receivers on this slate, actually. Even the value guys are pretty good when you have a guy like Sanu. When the, fifth, when the points over 50-point total, uh, Sanu is averaging, um, like, 15 points per game as a fantasy option. At 4,500, that's 3x in your value right there. Uh, more than 3x in your value. Anthony Miller, I mentioned I like. Cole Beasley dropped a touchdown this past week, but he's always a sneaky play, especially if he's coming out of the slot. Constant targets. He only has to get you like 12, 12 and a half points to meet value. Traquan Smith is a guy a lot of people are going to chase. Um, and rightfully so, right? I mean, he got a lot of targets finally. He made all a ton of receptions, a bunch of big plays, got in the end zone, going up against Atlanta. Nose believe of defense. Maybe he's a guy to fade, though, when a lot of people are going to be on him. His ownership is going to skyrocket in this type of game. Uh, Harris now we don't know what's going to happen with him especially because of the uh, the quarterback switch Colt McCoy like I said Doxon got more of the targets 4100 a lot of people he's going to have Byron Jones has been great against him this Dallas secondary has been great overall uh, so with Colt McCoy throwing the ball this really isn't a, I don't really want to touch anything on this offense right outside of maybe Chris Thompson if he comes back it says he's out right now uh, short week it's going to be hard for him to come back probably but it just seems like he can't recover from that rib injury Garrett Blunt's been terrible. He's had 21 carries for like 16 yards over the last three games. They just got to literally drop this man. Please just start running carry on more. But let's see what we can build here. Let's say we fade Zeke. will probably be the most owned guy in the slate just because people want to see him play earlier than Kamara, which I don't think is the right thing, but it probably will happen. Just looking at this slate, I think that Coleman's an interesting play because he keeps getting work out there, right? They were trailing in this game or was just trailing or a close game the whole time. More pass script for Atlanta. He only got 11 uh, opportunities, 11 touches, still got you 11 yards or 11 points. He's just going to get the work out there. Uh, tougher matchup against New Orleans. This is like a free square for me. There's no way I'm not playing Alvin Kamara. Um, pass catching backs have just crushed 
they said that they wanted to limit him a little bit more. They got out to a huge lead. That was a perfect opportunity uh, for Mark Ingram to come in and just run out the clock. He's going to get more work in a pass-catching game against Atlanta. And like I said, these running backs, he had 37 the first week. That was without Ingram. I don't see why he can't do just as well uh, in a game like this where, yeah, he had, no, he had one touchdown on 37-yard catch. Uh, and he only had 14 opportunities in this game, 14 touches. He's going to have more than that. And this is honestly a game where I don't really mind stacking both running backs. If he did that yesterday, he had a pretty damn good week, right? Uh, so I really don't mind stacking both running backs on the Saints in this game. I think it's going to differentiate your lineup even if you don't just like fade the first two games. Let's see what we could do if we do that. Now it's really cheap though, right? So defense, defense on Thanksgiving, I feel like all defenses you're playing on Thanksgiving, every player wants to do good. That doesn't change the fact that you have an awful defense like the Falcons. Um, but I also think that there's some opportunity there, right? The Saints have done decent in the past few weeks now. Uh, like, I don't want to pay... Eh. Paying up for the Cowboys isn't a bad option, actually. Like, I was going to say I don't want to pay up to the highest, but with Colt McCoy out, that's a good place to go. It's pretty shallow at defense. Like, no one's going to want to own these two guys at all in a high-scoring game, and it's later in the day. Uh, I like the Cowboys, but 3,200 is a lot if you want to get more in play. We'll see what value we could find. Tight end. A lot of good options here, right? I mean, Jordan Reed... He's been a guy he dominated on Thanksgiving a few years back. He's just been a guy who's always been dominating when he gets the opportunities. He's priced up a little bit now, came off of 3,800. Got 11 targets last week, right? Um, <clears throat> I think Colt McCoy is going to continue to look his way. He threw him a touchdown this past week. Tight ends are, and backs are usually where uh, new quarterbacks are going to go. They feel comfortable, short, intermediate passes. Adrian Peterson isn't going to catch a lot of balls. I think Jared Reed or Jordan Reed could be that guy to help him out. 4,700 isn't bad, but most expensive tight end, I don't know. Trey Burton finally hitting some regression with these limited targets, not getting in the end zone back-to-back -back weeks. Could be an interesting um, um, dart throw there. Benjamin Watson, when the, total, when the totals are high, he doesn't run around a lot in this offense, but when the totals are high, they run him out a little bit more, especially when they have good matchups. Atlanta's a good matchup for him. Deion Jones almost came back this past week. I'm not sure if he's going to, so that could kind of limit my expectations on these two guys. Um... So maybe I don't want to play both backs. That puts a lot of leverage on the Saints offense. And, and this is, I don't know, it's a three-game slate. So really, it's just kind of who you think is the best way to differentiate yourself if you're going tournament in cash. I even like this as well, but probably go more Zeke in cash. Uh, let's see where we can go. We're going to have to go value at wide receiver, something that I usually like to do at tight end. I like Cooper. The man just keeps catching balls and getting targets, right? He's kind of that target for Matt Ryan. We want to obviously stack this game. We got to get some pass catchers for Matt Ryan in this game. Uh, I do like Hooper a good amount. Um, outside of that, there's really not much. If you want to go really value here and just try and get a guy who's going to get you nine points, it's all he really needs to hit value. He hasn't done it, I don't think, this year, except yeah, he's done it a couple times. Actually, he caught a touchdown one time. Don't think this is a bad option. Uh, not really the route I want to go, but let's just say we go value at tight end, right? And we, we put Sway in there. Swain. Now we're going to go to wide receiver, and then we got to get a flex. So the wide receivers are, are pretty good this week, and you got a lot of good value right in this range, right? Like right in this range right here is a lot of value. Don't know what Marvin Jones is. Again, this is Monday, later in the week. If Marvin Jones is out, like Kenny Galladay becomes like the automatic. Going up against Fuller, I'm fine. He's absolutely talented. He had his way with Bradbury, and he's just going to get peppered with targets. So if Jones is out, I'm putting Galladay in. But like I mentioned, Ellington's a sneaky guy at only $3,200. He had nine targets, six catches, 52 yards. He basically took over the Golden Tate role. And again, uh, this is a game where Matthew Stafford threw a lot of balls, but he had his targets basically going right to Ellington and right to Galladay. So maybe you go cheaper and you go with Ellington and get off of Galladay. Uh, if Marvin Jones is playing, I think I like Ellington still. Like I like him in that slot role. It's not going to take away from really any of his playing time in the slot. Let's put Ellington in there. You can go up a little bit. I want Julio on Thanksgiving. There's no way I don't want to have Julio. Uh, and, and at this point, like, where do you want to go? Do you want to go Michael Thomas? And then really you can't do much there if you go Michael Thomas. Uh, I, want a Drew, I want a Drew Brees pass catcher though, right? Um, I don't know if I want Traquan. Wide receivers. Kirkwood had a good game. He had a good amount of targets, right? Uh, five targets. He, I think he just like was overthrown on a touchdown. Something to keep an eye on since he's super cheap at 3,200 as well. Uh, and a way to differentiate your lineup, right? I mean, if you go Kirkwood here, you can get Zeke if you want. You can get any single player left on the slate if you really want to. Um, you can get Zeke. I'd probably prefer Michael Thomas. And then there you go. Like That's one lineup you can go where you're basically fading the earlier games and you're literally stacking that late game. And I'm fine stacking that late game. Like The Saints, didn't, they still threw in the second half and were throwing a lot, but they didn't have to force it. Kirkwood got five targets. He caught 33 yards. Like Austin Carr got in the end zone. If Kirkwood gets in the end zone, and let's look at Austin Carr. Yeah, so he got in the end zone on two targets. He had two red zone targets, though. 
Both of those were red zone targets. They ran the same play that he got in on the end zone and they try to get it again to him. Um, yeah, I mean, I like Matt Ryan, of course. You're getting both running backs here. So you're getting both Saints. Really, you're capturing all the touchdowns with the Saints. Kamara and Thomas are going to be the majority of them. Ingram, Kirkwood. Maybe we have we, have, we probably have too much Saints here uh, when we only have Julio and Matt Ryan running it back with. But we could easily fix that by just going bang and bang. And then you get $900 to spend. Leave some money on the table. Differentiate your lineup more. I like Matt Ryan with Coleman and Jones. You're running it back with Kamara and Michael Thomas. It's literally like that is the way you stack this game, right? I don't see any other way that you stack this game unless you want to go up and you want to put Drew Brees here instead. And we can do that with the way we built this lineup, right? So again, we have two really value wide receivers like Kirkwood and Ellington. And I don't know if I want to stick with Kirkwood, but we don't have to actually stick with Kirkwood. If we go back and we go Matt Ryan, uh, we can come up a little bit. And can we get any of those Bears guys? Yeah, we can get Taylor, Gab Taylor Gabriel, who had, I think like 10 catches, but he have seven catches on nine targets, all low A dot targets, but that's fine for me. Had a couple of rushes, decent game out of Gabriel. I'd rather get up to Anthony Miller. We're... So this is the thing. We're cheap at tight end right now. Ellington, I don't mind. Uh, we're expensive at defense, though. Like, we can come up off them, uh, and I think we can get up to Anthony Miller then, 4,400. I like this lineup. Like, Anthony Miller continues to see targets. Uh, only three last night, but that's in a game where um, he had a few. I thought he had a few more. I thought he had, like, four or five. Maybe it was only three. Um, no, I'm thinking Aldrich Robinson. He's number 17 as well. But in a game where he just keeps seeing work in the end zone, he's a deep threat. Uh, you can go here and you can come off the you can come off the Cowboys D. I like staying with the Cowboys D because they're expensive. A lot of people might try and find value. Come off of Anthony Miller, and you have multiple options here now, right? You have Taylor Gabriel, who yeah he's been seeing less targets, but it kind of got shot back up this past week. Maybe that's a play that you want to go after. Um, probably going to be playing on the outside a little bit more. You have Josh Doxson, who make what you want out of his five targets in a few. Um, like a half with Colt McCoy, but he still had five targets. He's probably going to get Byron Jones, though, so I don't know if I like that. Kind of like Taylor Gabriel, leaving $400 on the table, I'm fine with. Brandon Marshall might actually play on a short week. That could be interesting. That can kind of kill um, any kind of Kirkwood hype, which you probably shouldn't. I like the younger guy. I like this lineup a lot. Um, just making one of these lineups. And again, like I said, I'll fade those first two games for a majority of it. You got one, two, three, four five guys in that late game out of your nine slots right three six nine slots five so i'll take five out of nine uh you could even go even more if you really wanted to go even more and, and i like the cowboys d i think that's kind of going to be the most owned d uh, but maybe not in tournaments save some money i love the fact that we get literally probably the three best playmakers uh in this falcons offense definitely julio definitely ryan and probably coleman you get to run it back with the two best playmakers on the saints and kamara and michael thomas Still getting relatively good value out of Ellington if he's going to get you seven targets, low A dot targets, and Gabriel. It's the same, it's basically the same type of player. The only reason I would go to Doxon is I like bigger bodied receivers. Um, like Doxon, they get more touchdowns. That's really the only thing with that. But Gabriel's a deep threat, so you, you get targets there. Uh, I like this a lot. Yeah, we're going cheap at tight end. Can we come up anywhere with 3,100? We can't. We just missed Ben Watson. I probably would have played him over Swain. Um, but I'm fine with this lineup right here, guys. Uh, might be one I throw in there. I just like my strategy that I mentioned. Fade these early games because everybody who plays publicly is going to load up on this early game a lot and this second game a lot. And then they'll say, you know what, I'll play the showdown slate and I'll get my Atlanta New Orleans. Take advantage of that. Wait the extra eight hours and collect all the money, right? Uh, I like this type of lineup. Appreciate you guys. One thing I'm just going to show you quick. Slide this. Yeah, all right. I want to make sure I had it up. This is Draft Dashboard. I got reached out to like a week or two ago. Uh, and it's a dollar for a month, and basically what you get this is like the this is like the uh, the slate for Monday and Thursday. So you can see the quarterbacks if you want to play that Monday Thursday slate that they have. Um, you get all the so if we looked at running backs, that's a better indication of like touches. You can see the touches percentage, forty four percent of the team's touches. That's pretty <clears throat> ridiculous. Um, projections, points for that. How many people are starting and owning him? You get this draft dashboard rank. It kind of takes into a lot of accounts how they're playing, their opponent. Uh, projections all those types of things salary you could put it to fan uh, duel if you like fan duel instead you could add people to watch list so that's what i have right here in this watch list for this monday night game depending on when you're watching this rams and uh chiefs pump for it and then from here this is just like the watch list i have right now and then you could uh optimize a lineup so there's a description below in the description below there's a link to this it's called draft dashboard it's 30 it's 30 days you get a month's worth uh for only a dollar and here you can see you can like optimize it. You can lock in like your captain if you wanted Mahomes a captain and see what other lineups that they would give you. So I'm doing it. 
um, I get I get a 50% commission. It's called like affiliate uh, marketing. Uh, so if you guys do it, I'll make 50 cents off of you. But I just wanted to be open and honest. I think it's a good tool to use. I've been using it the last two weeks because I like to look at like snap percentage, touch percentage, targets, things like that. So you can see it really quick. Go down below. You can sign up for a dollar for a month uh, and really just delete it right after that if you want. I'm fine with that. I'm just kind of trying to do ways to kind of expand my daily fantasy um, sports like uh, reach out to websites like this and just get more work with them if I can make some money and afford a better laptop to get you guys more videos That's the goal as well. So I appreciate that But yeah, this is just that three game slate love the idea of strategy of just fading the first two since there's gonna be a lot of public playing Probably be three showdown slates I would imagine for each one of these but get a lot of action in these games have fun on Thanksgiving get some food do all that stuff uh, Wear a jersey underneath the suit um, but yeah, I appreciate it guys if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed already really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button it helps the channel out I'm trying to get to 500 uh, Subscribers by this week, which I should it should be a pretty easy goal But a thousand by the next two weeks is, is my main goal um, Appreciate you hit that like button comment below any strategies that you guys have or you want to share We can uh, start a chat in the community down there. My name's Sal. Be safe everybody. Peace